Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe. Well, good. We learned something new every day. We did. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Hold on. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Hi, Jill. How are you? Thank you for the document. Oh, she says, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, she's, she says it's good to talk to you again. But... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So how are we gonna? Oh, I... oh yeah. How are we gonna do? Um, if I'm thinking of it right, would it be f of x is equal to x minus four, x minus six, and then x plus seven? Very good. The product of is that it? It's the okay. product of all of them. Okay. In other words, that's the linear factor that represents the zero of four. Okay. That's the linear factor that represents the zero of six, and that's mm -hmm. the linear factor that represents the zero of seven. Cool. If I multiply those three together, I will have a cubic. Sweet. Okay, and the cubic will have a coefficient of one, because at the very beginning, I'm going to end up with x times x times x. That's x cubed. So, okay. first of all, let's make sure we know how to multiply these. How do you multiply sure. these three together? Um, you would do the first two first, and then whatever you get for that, you would multiply it to the third one. Yeah. Um, okay. So, do the first two. What do you get? Yeah, so you get uh, x squared minus 10x. Good. I like that. Combine. Uh, plus 24. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then multiplying by that, what do you get? To x plus 7, you would get... Um, now do it term by term. So it would be x cubed. Um, when I say term by term, start with the term on the left, multiply both terms on the right, and then go okay. back and do the second term, multiplying both terms on the right, and then go okay. back and do the third term. Cool. So it'd be x cubed plus 7x squared um, minus 10x plus 24x, so that'd be hold plus 14x. Hold on. Oh, yeah. The 10x mm -hmm. times the x is 10x squared. Uh, oh, yeah, my bad. So it'd be minus 10x squared um, minus 70x. And then it would be plus 24x, uh, which is 56x. Well, don't don't add them together yet. Well, let's just do one step at a time. Okay. 7 times 24 is 168, I believe. 24 times 7, yeah, plus 168. Okay. Now, what you're going to find always in these cases is that mm -hmm. you have to combine those middle terms right there. Okay. You're not going to find more than one x cubed, and you're not going to find more than one number. In other words, okay. outsides are always, you can just assume, you got all the x cubes, and you got all the numbers. Okay. But we've got a couple of x squareds. What are those combined to? Uh, minus 3x squared. And how many x's? Um, minus 56x. 46. 46, my bad. Yeah. Okay. And there's our answer. And they said had to have a leading coefficient of 1. Well, it does. It does, yeah. If they would have said it had to, and notice what this means. That means mm -hmm. zero. Okay? Yeah. So if they would have said it had to have a leading coefficient of 2, mm -hmm. well, I'd just multiply this whole thing by 2 to get 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus 92x plus 336. Yeah. That polynomial has the same zeros of 4, 6, and 7. Because note okay. what this polynomial is. It's just multiplied by 2 in front. Okay. And then if I divide both sides by 2, I get those three original equals 0 still. Right. So when they give you those conditions, it 
merely means that you may have to do more than just multiply those three factors together. Okay. In this case, you didn't because no. we multiplied those three factors, we, we got a coefficient of 1. Right. Okay. Now, okay. 15. Oh, ouch. Okay. What about um, so, three factors? Yeah, so it'd be f of x is equal to... Now, what are my x, three factors? Um, i minus i and then 3. Okay, so how about if 4 converted to x minus 4, what does i convert to? Uh, minus i. x minus i. x minus i, yeah. In other words, whatever the zero is, you have to subtract it from x to produce the linear factor. Right. And I'm going to multiply that by x plus i for the second zero. Yep. And, and then I'm... x minus 3. Right. In other words, okay. the same strategy for each. Now, multiply those two together, and you're going to get a quadratic. Yeah. You get uh, x squared... Um, plus... The two middle terms cancel. What's the last term? Um, minus i squared. Which converts to what number? Minus 1. Well, it's minus a minus. Well, it's minus, it'd be plus 1. Plus 1. There's the yeah. quadratic you get by multiplying those two terms together. Okay. Now, cool. it's easier to multiply those two together. What do you get? Um, and then, hold on. Uh, then you'd get um, x cubed. Here your two middle terms are not going to cancel, so you're going to have to do a complete FOIL on this. Yeah, so it'd be x cubed minus 2x. Hold up. Minus 3x squared. Minus Whereas when you're doing FOIL, you're doing that, and then you're doing that, and then you're right. doing this, and then you're doing this. Right, so it'd be uh, minus three x squared. Right. What's the middle? Um, What's plus one x. Right. Um, and then it'd be minus three. Right. And here, these two terms don't combine. No. But we have our polynomial nonetheless, don't we? Uh huh. Do we have yeah. a polynomial, and it still has a coefficient of one, a leading coefficient. When they say leading coefficient, they mean of your highest degree term. Okay, yeah, that makes uh, sense. And yeah. like I said, it wouldn't have to be one. I could, because all I know is that all that together equals zero. Mm -hmm. So I could multiply both sides of the equation by three easily. Uh huh. And then I yeah. have a leading coefficient of three. Right. So had they said it has to have a leading coefficient of three, then I would have taken this and multiplied every term by three. Mm hmm. Okay. Huh? All right. Cool. End behavior. Yeah. That merely is as x goes to positive and negative infinity, as they say down below. Mm-hmm. All right. So okay. let me just ask you if you know the question. <laughs> What's that equal to if x goes to positive infinity? Uh, x squared. Which is, if you substitute infinity for x? Positive infinity. Okay. So, mm -hmm. what I can say is the limit of that, as x goes to positive infinity, is positive infinity. Uh -huh. What if I had this? Now, what's the limit of that as x goes to positive infinity? Uh, to negative infinity. Yeah, because if I got a positive infinity times a negative infinity, I got negative infinity. Right. So that's how you figure out end behavior, is just by substituting the, either the negative infinity or the positive infinity for x. Okay. okay. And you really don't care what these numbers are. This minus 1 is... Immaterial, the plus 1 is immaterial, and the minus 5 is immaterial. So okay. this is the same exact problem as the following. Minus okay. x times x 
times x. Same problem. I want the limit of that as x goes to positive infinity first. What does that give you? Uh, wouldn't that give you positive infinity? No. I still got uh, well. a negative sign there. And I got three infinities, all positive, times one another. That's positive infinity, but then I still got the negative. So, so it'd be x is to negative infinity, yeah. Now, as x goes to negative infinity, mm -hmm. it's different. Because now okay. I'm going to substitute negative infinity. So I got a negative times a negative infinity times a negative infinity times a negative infinity. There's lots of ways to do this. This is the way I find the most helpful. What's that answer? Um, it'd be positive infinity. Correct. Okay. So the cool. end behavior as you go to infinity is negative infinity. The end mm -hmm. behavior as you go to negative infinity is positive infinity. So right. this particular problem, they're opposite, basically. Okay. But that's what you do in all of these, is cool. substitute for x the negative infinity and ignore the other numbers. They're not mm -hmm. important. In other words, when you're dealing with numbers like infinity, it doesn't matter whether you're going to subtract 1 from it or add 5 or add 4. Right. Okay? Okay. So okay. the second problem can basically be narrowed down to mm -hmm. f of x equals, I don't even need that leading 2. That doesn't affect anything, right? Right. So it's x times x times x squared. That's essentially what we're looking at. So now okay. let's do the first one. Let's do them in the order they ask. As x mm -hmm. goes to negative infinity, what does f of x go to? To, for this one, it would be positive infinity. Yeah, because when I substitute negative infinity for here and I square it, it turns into a positive infinity. Yeah. Then I have infinity times infinity times infinity, that's positive infinity. Cool. But as x goes to positive infinity, what does it go to? Negative infinity. No, I tricked you. Right. Well, would it be like, because like... This substitute. Because all you're doing yeah. is substituting infinity. So we're going to have infinity times infinity uh -huh. times infinity squared. Right. There, are no, there are no negative signs anywhere there. Right, so it would be positive infinity. Yes. So okay. the behavior on this one is positive infinity regardless of... In other words, this graph is going to look something like this. Right. We call it like... Like the terms that he uses, touchdown, negative Egyptian, positive yeah. Egyptian. Well, this is a cortic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I yeah. got an x times an x times an x squared... That's, mm -hmm. My leading term is going to be x to the fourth. Yeah. And cortex usually goes away on each end. Mm -hmm. Because as x goes to positive infinity, y is going to infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, y is going to infinity. Now, okay. if I have a cubic, cubics mm -hmm. tend to look like this. Where as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. Right. So it really comes down to the degree of the polynomial mm -hmm. and whether there's any leading negative signs. There was a leading negative sign over here. Even though it was a cubic, the leading negative sign basically reversed this and made it look like this. Mm -hmm. Now, as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to negative infinity, and as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity. Okay. That's why we got the answers we did on 16, was because that leading negative sign. Right. All right, let's look at okay. 18. 
eight, or seven. So it's or seventeen. So that'd be negative infinity, and then we just did seventeen. They both go to positive yeah. infinity. Okay. Yeah. Because That's we're looking at a quartic. In other words, if you sub get rid of all the numbers, you can get rid of the two. You can get rid of the negative one. You basically have x times x times x squared. Okay. That's x to the fourth. Right. And when you substitute negative infinity to x into x to the fourth, you get positive infinity. Okay, cool. Now, on 18, mm -hmm. we don't care about this leading 2, we don't care about that negative 3, we don't care about that 2. We essentially are looking at f of x being x times x squared in terms of n behavior. Okay. Okay, yeah. that's x cubed. Uh, no leading negative sign. So, and also there's another thing that you don't get from these pro these problems they're giving you, but probably we will see some like that. And that uh, is, if you're trying to figure out end behavior on something like this, uh -huh. the only thing that matters is the highest degree. Okay. In other words, I can care less about all of those. My mm -hmm. end behavior is based on that. Okay. And that alone. Right. Well, in this problem, that's why if I were to multi if I were to take the trouble to multiply these out, in other words, if I were to square that and multiply it by that, that'd be a lot of work, right? That would be, uh, yeah. A lot of unnecessary, unnecessary steps. Unnecessary. The only mm -hmm. thing I'm gonna care about is that leading cubic which is going to be x cubed. Okay. If you were to multiply these all out, the leading is going to be 2x cubed, because it still has that leading 2, but the 2 is immaterial. Right. In other words, as x goes to negative infinity, what does y go to, or f of x? Positive infinity. No, plug in negative right. infinity and cube it. Which is negative infinity. That's right. Okay. And that goes to negative infinity. Now plug in positive infinity in cubit. Uh, you get negative infinity. No. What you know? Positive times positive times positive. Oh, which is positive, so it'd be positive. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. Yes, when you're plugging in infinity, it's just like plugging in a number. Okay. You might as well plug in the number minus 2 or plus 2 and see what your answer is. Is it minus or is it plus? Well, since we're working off of an x cubed, mm -hmm. if I plugged in minus 2, I'd get minus 8. So if I plug in minus infinity, I get minus infinity. Mm -hmm. But if I plug in a plus 2, I get plus 8. So if I plug in a plus infinity, I get plus infinity. Okay. And that's the only rules you need to know, is that minus infinity times minus infinity is plus infinity. Three right. minuses together is minus. Right. All right, cool. All right. Write a cubic function that passes through those points. All right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, what's the standard format for a cubic function? You know, let's write it in black. Okay. It's f of x mm -hmm. equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus mm -hmm. cx plus d. Oh, wow. Okay. Very similar to the standard formula for a quadratic, right? Except this is a it, it, Yeah. There's no difference, really. If I had a cortex, then it would be an A, a B, a C, a D, and an E. Mm -hmm. But I have a cubic. They tell us that. Now they give us four points that satisfy this. What do I do at that first point? Ah, uh, cube it, right? No, substitute. In other words, oh, yeah. if, if these four points are on my graph, 
then it has to satisfy this equation. I, f of x has to be 0 whenever x is minus 2. So there's yeah. one equation. 0 equals a times minus 2 school cubed mm -hmm. plus b times minus 2 squared plus c times minus 2 plus d. Okay. That's one equation. Okay. Now, use the second point. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, that's a lot. You can see where this is going. Yep. We're going to end up with four equations and four unknowns. Wow. And our okay. unknowns are A, B, C, and D. Mm hmm And in the third point, we got 0 equals A times minus 4 cubed, so forth and so on. Uh-huh. We're kind of out of time, so we don't really even have time to finish this problem, but you can see that it's going to be a bear to solve. Yeah, no kidding. Whenever you end up with multiple equations and multiple variables, it's tough. It is tough, um, yeah. But there's a method to do it. It's just very long and involved and tedious. I can't believe right. we're giving you four points on these cubic functions. Yeah, me neither. Uh, I doubt that they've ever asked you to solve four equations and four unknowns. They haven't. They ask you, I remember at the beginning of the year, they gave you three equations and three unknowns. Mm -hmm. As long as you have the same number of unknowns as you have equations, you can always solve it. Uh-huh, for sure. And we're going to end up here with, if I continue as I'm doing... I'm going to plug in that point and come up with a fourth equation, which is going to be 3 equals mm -hmm. a times minus 1 cubed plus mm -hmm. b times minus 1 squared and so forth and so on. Now, there may be a, an easy solution here that isn't quite as tedious as solving four equations and four unknowns, right. but it won't be that easy. No. Um, yeah. Yeah, you might be able to do something. Eh, I don't know. This is going to be tough, but do it. That's going to be tough. But do it. Yeah. I can't believe they gave you two of them. Me neither. Gosh. That's sick. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Before I let you go, we won't. Mm -hmm. It would take us a half hour to do both these problems, incidentally. Jeez. Yeah. I know. It's terrible. Man, that's the yeah. Fact that's terrible. That y is zero might make it a little easier to actually solve for all of these. Because yeah. if these are both equal to zero, then I can set that equal to that, and that is going to make it kind of easier to solve. Yeah. All right, let's just make sure on 21, uh -huh. how do you get f of minus 3? What does that mean? Um, it means on the outside of the what do you, uh, what synthetic. Do you do with the minus? Yeah. Even though they say evaluate using synthetic division, mm -hmm. that's not really the best way to evaluate it. Mm -hmm. I guess you can. Let me think for a minute. The best way to evaluate it is to plug in minus 3 for x. Right. That's what it means yeah. when they say, what is f of minus 3? It means whatever's in the parentheses, plug in for x, and then evaluate. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Now, uh -huh. to do it using synthetic division in the box, you're going to put the minus 3. Mm -hmm. Across the top, I'm going to put the 2, the minus 6. Notice there's a missing x squared, so I need a uh -huh. 0 for that term. And then I got a 5 for the x term and a minus 7. Okay, zero, 5. If I do that synthetic division... Mm -hmm. I think my remainder is my answer. Now let, okay. Let me just do it real quick here. Yeah. Jesus, could they make it any harder? No kidding. Gosh. So that thing should evaluate 
to 302. Mm -hmm. In other words, whatever you come up with for that number is what that polynomial would be equal to if you were to substitute minus 3 for x. Okay. And that's the way you evaluate it using synthetic division. Right. Okay. And the same for 22. Dividing by synthetic division, what goes in the box on number 23? Mm -hmm. What goes in the box? Um, Minus 2 or plus 2? Uh, for, well, for, let me see. For 23. For tw oh, I'm sorry. I was like at 3 on 1. I was like, what was that? Yeah. Uh, so that would be positive 2. Okay, and for 24, what goes in the box? Uh, positive 3. Okay. And the only thing, 23, you don't need any dummy variables. Mm -hmm. 24, you do. Notice you're okay. dividing it into x squared plus 9. There's a missing x term. Uh -huh. So to do 24, I'm going to put 3 in the box. And across mm -hmm. the top, I got 1, 0, and 9. Okay. You just see three numbers? Yeah. For that one? Like, okay. Yeah. In other words, I've got a 1 for the x squared term. Mm -hmm. I got a 0 for the x term because uh -huh. it's not there. Right. And I got a 9 for the constant. Okay. So the first number is always the coefficient of your highest degree. Okay. And then you just okay. need a number for every degree after that. Notice on 23, I've got an x squared, I have an x, and I have a number. So I don't need any dummy variables. Right. <clears throat> cool. And the synthetic division will produce the answer mm -hmm. with that remainder. That okay. very last number is the remainder. If that remainder is zero, well, then that's a factor. Of mm -hmm. okay. All right. Cool. These were tough. This was really an hour's worth of material, but yeah, for sure. hopefully your test isn't until Thursday or Friday on this material. Uh it's Wednesday. He just gave us the review today, so um, yeah. Let's. Which kind of stuff? You're set up done, for Wednesday. Done two pages, yeah, so. You want to change that to Tuesday? I was just gonna say that. Yeah. And do you think we could do a, an hour session if you have that or no? Yeah. Okay, cool. Hold on a second. Yeah, definitely. Just a second. What happened to you? There you go. Hold on. Let me cancel that. Okay. And make that an hour. Cool. So you're set up for an hour tomorrow night at 8 and then nothing on Wednesday. Sounds good. Yeah. Right. Let's just do that. All right. I'll talk to you tomorrow at 8. Sounds good. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.